I want to start this lecture off by sharing a personal story. When I was in fifth grade, I was kind of pudgy, kind of slow, and it wasn't until sixth grade when I hit my growth spurt. And so I hit my growth spurt and, you know, things started to change. Um, you know, my voice got deeper and I started to get, you know, hair on my body. And, you know, all of a sudden I became a, a better athlete. I became more thin. And so um, what, what caused this effect, right? When boys hit puberty, they get a surge in testosterone. And so what testosterone does, it has like, you know, two main effects. So one is, you know, boys are, you know, becoming men, they're starting to develop these uh, masculine characteristics. And then another process, which is known as spermatogenesis, so the production of sperm, uh, it occurs. Okay, and so uh, what I have drawn here on the board, <clears throat> so this is the brain and um, this region here is the anterior uh, pituitary. And so hormones that are secreted by the anterior pituitary include um, FSH, so follicle stimulating hormone, and also uh, luteinizing hormone. And so these tropic hormones, their target is the testes. But in order for both of these hormones um, to be released, we have what's known as gonadotropin releasing hormone. So gonadotropin releasing hormone gets into the anterior pituitary from the hypophyseal portal system. And so FSH and LH, they'll get into the blood and then reach their testes, uh, reach the testes. And so what I have drawn here, so this here is a, a cross section of the testes and you see these coiled tubes? These coiled tubes are what's known as the seminiferous tubules. And this is the site for spermatogenesis, so where sperm production occurs. And then um, these different, the seminiferous tubules, they merge here and form the red testes. And then um, this region over here, this is known as the epididymis. So the epididymis is the site for sperm nitration. Okay, but we're gonna talk about um, spermatogenesis. So if I take a cross section of the seminiferous tubules, so this is the cross section here, and then I have these two different cells here. And so because the hormones that are released, so FSH and LH, these are the cells that they're gonna um, target. So for FSH, FSH targets a cell known as the leading cell. And so the reason they call it the leading cell is because this is the physiologist that discovered it. And so when, um, when FSH, when it binds to its receptor here, because this is a, it's a peptide hormone. So once it binds to its receptor, it's going to um, initiate our signaling cascade. Our, we're gonna use our secondary messenger system in order to synthesize um, testosterone. And so um, once it binds to its receptor, we increase our cyclic AMP, we get our protein kinase A, and what our protein kinase A, what it'll do it'll, is it'll activate the enzymes that are required to synthesize testosterone. And so we synthesize testosterone using cholesterol as our starting material. And so once testosterone is synthesized, it um, travels across, so it diffuses across into this cell. And so this cell is known as the Sertoli cell. And so the hormone that binds here to the Sertoli cell is LH. So LH is also a peptide, so it binds to its receptor. We then um, use our secondary messenger system, so we use PKA. And when we activate the PKA, we can undergo protein synthesis. 
And the protein, one of the proteins that we synthesize is known as ABP. So ABP stands for androgen binding protein. So when we say androgen, what that's referring to is sex hormones. And so what the androgen that binds to this protein is testosterone. So it binds testosterone. And so the reason that we're binding um, testosterone here is because, so here's my, actually we'll go on this side. So this is what my sperm cell would be. Because if we look at the cross section and um, the process of spermatogenesis, so the sperm cells, they don't become fully developed until, or they don't develop their tails until they reach here. Um, this is like the lumen of it. And so this is where the tail would be and then this is where the head of the sperm would be. Okay, so we need this androgen binding protein to bind to testosterone. And so we have to keep testosterone here within the testes because if testosterone is not around, then the sperm cells will get phagocytized. They'll be um, removed from the body. So it's important to uh, keep this testosterone for spermatogenesis, uh, spermatogenesis to happen. And um, another thing that I want to uh, talk about is that, so I said that the testosterone will diffuse here and get into the Sertoli cell. Well, this testosterone the testosterone can also travel here. It also travels to the body. So it'll go to the rest of the body where we'll then develop, we'll then develop the masculine, the masculine features for males. Okay, so um, now that we've uh, talked about this, one other uh, hormone that I want to um, discuss or mention is what's known as growth hormone. So growth hormone is a synergist, meaning that it's going to um, help this process for um, the production of testosterone and also um, with spermatogenesis. Okay, so now that we have all of this laid out, the last thing that we need to discuss is the negative feedback. So when testosterone levels, when they've reached their, their optimal level, the, the Sertoli cells may secrete what's known as inhibin. So we call it inhibin because what it's going to do, it's, it's going to inhibit the gonadotropin releasing hormone, and then also the hormones from the anterior pituitary. Okay, and so um, that's it for this lecture. And the next one, what we're gonna discuss is uh, the specific uh, process of spermatogenesis.